Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> on today's uh, stated agenda, the council will vote on uh, several finance items. Introduction 882, sponsored by council member Danny Drum, would change the date of the initial eligibility for the small business tax credit against the commercial rent tax, the CRT, from July 1st, 2018 to June 1st, 2018, which aligns with the way the CRT fiscal year is aligned. Um, so we're doing that. The council will vote on seven Article 11 exemptions. Seneca Avenue in Councilmember Salamanca's district. Lafayette Morrison in Councilmember Salamanca's district. Teller Avenue in Councilmember Salamanca's district. Aquinas in Councilmember Salamanca's district. Inwood House in Councilmember Rodriguez's district. Essie Jeffries in Councilmember Levine's district. And Rockaway Village in Councilmember Richards's district. The council will also vote on the following land use items. PRC Tiffany Street, the council is voting to approve an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the development of a new 100% affordable project with 161 residential units in Chair Salamanca's district. Bethany Place, the council will be voting, again, an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of one building totaling 23 residential units as 100% affordable housing in Councilmember Perkins's district. Two Tenants United HDFC buildings. The council will be voting to approve a UDAP project and a tax exemption for two six-story buildings in Councilmember Rivera's district. CSH, the council will vote to approve a tax exemption for two small buildings that are part of a larger portfolio of preserved affordable housing administered by the Corporation for Supportive Housing in Councilmember Ampre Samuels' district. MPLP Uptown Cluster 6, the council will be voting to approve a tax exemption of a UDAP project to facilitate the disposition of six city-owned buildings totaling 82 units. The units will be preserved at 100% affordable housing in Councilmember Perkins' district. And lastly, 615 West 150th Street will be voting to approve another Article 11 <clears throat> tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of two buildings totaling 80 units as 100% affordable housing and this is in Council Member Levine's district. Uh, today is a Matteo Day uh, at the City Council. We're gonna be vote voting on uh, the following legislation. First, introduction 210B, sponsored by Minority Leader and my good friend Steve Matteo. It's gonna require that property owners be given more time to make necessary repairs to the sidewalk adjacent to their property, increasing the timeline from 45 days to 75 days, an additional month they'll have. The purpose of the legislation is to allow more time for property owners to complete sidewalk repairs, which is especially important during winter months when weather conditions are less conducive to complete competing uh, sidewalk work. Before I call him up on that, the other bill that we're passing that's his today, and I'm really proud of this bill, because uh, in the last council, he and I worked on the, the first iteration of this bill together. It's next introduction 189A, um, and it's gonna require that automated external defibrillators, AEDs, be provided to youth softball leagues, playing on city-owned land at no cost. A commotio uh, cordosis is caused by a hardball or object directly striking the left chest wall, resulting in cardiac arrest and sudden death. Softball has the second highest incident rates of these events, and 75% of the folks who experience this are under the age of 18 years old. An AED is the only effective treatment for restoring a regular heart rhythm during a sudden cardiac arrest event, and it's easy to operate for someone with no medical background. More than 95% of patients who receive a defibrillation shock in the first minute of cardiac arrest survive I want to invite Minority Leader Matteo to speak on both of these items. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the first bill, uh, the sidewalk bill, um, you know, it comes out of uh, a constituent service that, that we've, we've been doing in Staten Island since I was a staffer um, and since I've been elected. And basically, um, when you issued a DOT violation, they issued almost 15,000 in 2017. Um, homeowners and property owners just don't have enough time to make the repairs before a lien's put in the house. And it's 45 days currently, as the speaker said, and we have worked with the administration to add another month. 
Um, many times uh, a property owner, homeowner will get a violation in the winter. Um, certainly can't uh, pour cement during the winter months. So we, we worked with the administration um, to come up with, with this compromise of 75 days to give uh, homeowners um, that time to to prepare, to get the quotes, to hire someone, and to pour the cement. So it's a common sense measure um, that my office has been dealing with for, for a while now, so very happy and, and pleased that we've been able to come to this agreement. The second bill, um, as Speaker Johnson said, um, is something that we're both very proud of. Um, two years ago, we came up with a, a program um, to provide all baseball coaches that, that uh, that the teams play on, on city-owned fields in AD, not just at the fields. And at our hearing, um, it became problematic that we couldn't just put the ADs um, at the facilities. Um, weather conditions, they were worried about being stolen. So, and we were worried that it wasn't gonna help them at their practices too, when certainly uh, uh, someone can get injured. So we, we came up with this program where uh, basically every team, every coach has an AD at a practice and a game. Um, and the next logical step um, that we always had was, was to expand it to sports, and, and the next uh, sport that we're expanding to is youth softball. And, um, um, you know, ADs are good for about seven years. They're getting training certification for two years. Uh, it's a cost-effective bill, um, and, you know, as, as the speaker said, it's the best chance to survive cardi cardiac arrest uh, with an AD is within the first six minutes. So we're very, very pleased that we're able to expand uh, to use softball. Uh, the speaker and I both committed to continuing this expansion. Um, again, we've been doing this in phases, um, especially we want to see how the program worked for the youth leagues, and it's been uh, such a successful program. Parks has done a great job of implementing it. Um, look forward to working with the speaker to expand it even further. Um, we also have our Beating Hearts Initiative in the council, where the council's given out over 600 AEDs over the last three years uh, with training to other groups that uh, these bills aren't, and sports teams that this bill and the other bill doesn't cover. But we're gonna expand, and I wanna thank the speaker because um, you know we had to have a, a strong commitment when he was the chair of the health committee and now as the speaker of the council, and I thank him for his partnership and look forward to expanding AD access. Thank you. Thank you, Minority Leader Matty. Uh, the Minority Leader and I are asking for a uh, correction to a Jen Firmino story <laughs> from a few years ago. <laughs> Uh, when she was at the Daily News, uh, calling out the council and not including youth softball. So we, we made that correction. Yeah. We're asking we for an update. We put it in <laughs> to get the uh, correction. Can you give me the link to the story? Uh, the lead on that story was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering why not. The Boys of Summer, it right. said something like that. Yeah. Um, it's fake, it's fake. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> For everything, okay. Uh, it's it's uh, it's Matteo and Republican Day here at the council because our next introduction is Introduction 14A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli. He's not here today, but his bill would require the mandatory citywide campaign debates be simultaneously broadcast on city-owned or operated television channels with the largest public audience. In 2017, some of the citywide debates were sponsored. Uh, and aired by a cable television station, leaving New Yorkers who did not subscribe to that service unable to watch those debates on their televisions. This bill would ensure that no matter who is the primary broadcast sponsor, those citywide debates will be viewable by as many New Yorkers as possible. Again, Councilmember, Councilmember Borelli can't be here today, but uh, we look forward to passing this bill, and I thank him for his work on this. Our last introduction is Introduction 895, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller. It would extend health insurance coverage for surviving family members of DOT Bridges electrician George Staub, who was killed along the Hutchins River Parkway on April 4th. The administrative code already authorizes health insurance to be provided to family members of uniformed employees of the police, fire, correction, and sanitation departments who have died in the line of duty. This bill would extend insurance coverage for Mr. Staub's widow, Tara Staub, and two of their children. Councilman Miller, Miller is unable to join us today. He's still on um, medical leave. He had surgery. Um, I wanna save the Staub family, of course, in our thoughts. So that concludes uh, today's agenda. Any questions on things that we discussed? Um, any questions on anything else? Brendan. I have a question on the issue of youth softball. Uh, what's the current status on the uh, softball team? 
We haven't had specific conversations at this moment in time on, um, I mean, the mayor knows how we feel. He saw it was in our response. He's seen what members have said at hearings and publicly, but we haven't gotten down to the nitty gritty um, details or negotiations that's happening uh, this week and next week and the following week. Um, so we're still meeting internally, uh, talking as a body, and I, of course, talk to the mayor regularly, and he knows how we feel, and um, I feel good about where we are as a council, and I look forward to uh, an honest, good faith negotiation with the administration. Have you spoken about valuations? I, I never said that that was an accurate story. You know, no one went on. No one went on the record and talked in that story, which I found interesting. I think that there were a lot of members here who found uh, the conversations that we've had that uh, internally to not align with what was in that story. I don't know why certain members decided to say those things, but uh, I've never said that we were doing that. We've had a conversation about initiatives, but not in the way that that story portrayed. Samar? I'm not going to the convention. I'm here literally uh, meeting with members and working on the budget. I just left a BNT meeting to come here, then we're having stated, then I'm having more budget meetings uh, later today. And so I, I don't have time to, to be at the convention. I, of course, um, endorsed uh, Tisha James uh, for Attorney General, really proudly endorsed her. Um, and. Uh, I'm sure I'll engage po more politically uh, after uh, the budget's over, but right now I'm just focused on the budget for the next few weeks, so I don't have time to go to uh, Long Island right now, but um, yeah. Honestly, the governor and I haven't had the opportunity to actually talk about that. We've talked about government-related stuff. We've talked about, we talked of course about the state budget during the state budget process. Uh, we've talked about a little bit of legislative stuff, uh, but he and I haven't had a, a conversation uh, on that front. I'm sure we will at some point, um, but I, he and I haven't engaged in that conversation. Have I'm happy to talk with anyone, but I haven't, the governor and I haven't talked about that, and I haven't talked with anyone else about that besides Letitia James. She was the only person who I engaged in that with at this point. Aaron? I'm open to it. I mean, I think we need to protect the environment. Um, I like the wood. I thought it was funny. Uh, but I, it's like anything, it will go through the normal legislative process. We'll see if there's consensus in the body. Um, of course, the council took action on plastic bags and we got caught up in uh, issues that came out of Albany on that. Uh, but I think, the council's deeply committed to protecting the environment and we know that plastic is um, very destructive. Uh, so that will go through the normal legislative process. I just read the kind of the top line items around it. I haven't had an opportunity to actually dig into the details around it, which I will do at some point. Um, I really liked to hear the fact that instead of waiting uh, 50 years for updated signals, Andy Byford thinks that we could do it in five years. Um, again, the details on that matter, on station closures, on how that affects particular lines, on the cost associated, all of those details really matter. But I do think that it is a great thing that uh, Andy Byford believes that we could do it in 10% of the time than what was initially projected by the MTA just a few months ago. How much does it really cost? I don't know yet. Again, I have to look at the details of the plan. The city, of course, stepped up on the subway action plan. Um, I had always shown openness to that. That openness depended on a variety of things, on uh, a level of accountability, 
on a lockbox that the money would actually go to subway repairs and not to Metro North, Long Island Railroad, East Side Access, and other projects that have gone over budget and haven't directly uh, benefited strap hangers on a daily basis. If we have a future conversation about future money, I'm sure I would have similar principles uh, around that. Uh, how's it gonna benefit the city? What will the timeline be? Uh, where will that money directly go? Those are the principles that we need to talk about. And then I think the city, again, has to have more say on how that money gets spent besides uh, for city appointed board members uh, having representation on the board. If we're gonna put in a significant amount of money, we have to be able to have a conversation about what that actually means. I can't analyze that yet until I actually sit down with Andy Byford and the MTA to understand the plan, to understand the timing of it, to understand the details and how it gets executed. I can't predict the mayor and the governor. Thank you.